Summit of the GESSSQ Conference. Um, this will be about petrology and geochronology, and I would like to welcome Owen Welsh to present his research. He's currently the only undergraduate student presenting at this conference, so... G'day everyone, my name is Owen Welsh and I'm here to talk to you about science. What type of science you may ask? I'm here to talk to you about volcano science. <laughs> so, I have been extremely lucky to start my honours project very early and under the supervision of Dr. Teresa Ubai. Um, my focus is on two volcanic basalts within New Zealand's Tongariro Volcanic Centre and this is situation, situated <coughs> in New Zealand's North Island. Today I'll be running through my results and interpretations that I have obtained from my preliminary data. So why do we study volcanoes? This is simply because volcanoes are dangerous. However, there is a more complex, uh, there is a more complex kind of background to this as well. So volcanoes largely result from tectonic movement of tectonic plates, largely resulting with subduction zones. Um, using the Pacific Ocean as an example, you can see that within this red area, uh, awkwardly named the Ring of Fire, we get this large congregation of volcanic activity. This volcanic activity um, in this Ring of Fire, and specifically New Zealand because it is my study region, um, is typically felsic or rhyolitic in composition and produces very explosive and violent eruptions. This rhyolitic volcanism and the eruptions that it causes is, however, thought to be a result of injection of mafic or basaltic-like magmas. Therefore, it is important to study these <coughs> basaltic magmas where they do occur at the surface, like I am doing in my study. So my fields, my field sites are in two locations, which is the Pukanaki Syndicone, located in the west of the Tongariro Volcanic Centre, and Ohakuni, which is located in the south of the Tongariro Volcanic Centre, as indicated on the board. Within Pukanaki, I identified five escarpments which were of interest, where only two were sampled, as the others were either highly weathered, consisted mainly of ash, or was too fine scoriac. The ones that I sampled was escarpment one and escarpment two, where escarpment one had 14 samples collected from four different scoria layers. Escarpment 2 had four samples taken from two different scurry layers. For Escarpment 1, you can see a stratigraphic column here where I took samples from different scurry layers, and this was mainly done so I could later on try and identify a... I could later try and identify uh, changes in the magma system through time. Within Ohakuni, there was two outcrops identified that were good enough for sampling. However, these could not be specially uh, correlated to one another because there was a lot of weathering and vegetation overgrowth. There were other locations also identified, but these were very weathered, so I did not sample yet. After this uh, field work, I conducted analytical, analytical techniques, which included petrography and electron microprobe analyses. Through petrography, I identified multiple mafic rejuvenation events. I will go through the two most notable of these now. The first being plagioclase phenocrysts with sieved core texture. This occurs when we have a mafic injection into a more felsic-like composition of, of magma in a mush system. This magma then intrudes and reacts with the plagioclase where we have rapid growth of the phenocryst. And this phenocryst then encapsulates ground mass, where this ground mass then forms, crystallizes quickly, forming <coughs> volcanic glass, which you can see as this brown and black kind of spotty stuff in the center of the phenocryst. The second example is olivine phenocryst that was injected with the mafic magma into this mush system. This mafic like olivine then reacts with the higher silica content in the more felsic like magma forming these orthoperoxine reaction rooms, as you can see on the image. For the uh, electron microprobe analyses, there was also indication of this mafic rejuvenation event, where the first is a plagioclase phenocryst that exhibits reverse zoning. This plagioclase phenocryst is indicate, this 
final mafic rejuvenation event is interpreted to be the eruption producing uh, mechanism as it is the final growth stage of the phenocryst. In the other example, we had two mafic rejuvenation events identified within an orthopyroxene phenocryst. These, um, this indicates that the eruptions were more difficult to actually occur in this region, uh, where the first one did not cause the eruption, and then the second one, was the second, which then allowed for later further growth of a more felsic-like composition, and then there was a second uh, eruption mechanism which is identified as the cause for the eruption. As you can see here, this phenocryst, however, does not does also contain a further, more felsic-like composition at the rim, and this is interpreted to be a result of the Ohakuni magma mush system being deeper. This also correlates to the fact that there was no plagioclase identified in this magma, and plagioclase forms in the magma when it is extremely anhydrous. But Pukanaki, on the other hand, did have plagioclase and is interpreted to be a more shallow mush system where degassing is easier and furthermore. So this more felsic rim would have occurred when we had the crystal traveling up towards the surface before it would erupt it. While the plagioclase, just as soon as the mafic injection occurred, it was essentially almost immediately erupted, not allowing a more felsic-like growth. Using this electron microprobe data, then I created these schematics <coughs> where I could identify the amount of transitions that were occurring. These thicker and thinner lines and the numbers next to these lines indicate the amount of times that I saw these transitions in the data. So for Pukanaki, you can see that it's quite simple, where we have simple Phoenix risk growth, and then as soon as we have this mafic injection, we have the enrichment zone. Um, for Ohakuni, we can see that it's more complex, likely because it is more difficult for it to erupt. So we have continued rejuvenation events, keep changing it, and this crystals essentially remember these different events. Using all this data, I created some preliminary magmatic reconstructions for Ohakuni and Pukanaki. I will begin with Pukanaki. So for Pukanaki, we have our Moho discontinuity, where we have a magmatic, where we have magma coming up via a magmatic pathway, and it includes olivine xenocrysts. These olivine xenocrysts then enter a more felsic-like mush complex, and with the reaction of this silica, higher silica content in this magma mush system, it creates these pyroxene reaction rings. Within this magma system, we also have plagioclase that has normal zoning. These plagioclases are indicated to be spatially distant from the injection zone and are likely, and therefore likely do not indicate that we have, uh, yeah, it doesn't interact with the mafic synthesis mafic injection and therefore does not uh, indicate the mafic complexity. We do however see some of the plagioclase that does interact it with it where we get our complex sieve-like texture and reverse zoning. In this system we also have pyroxene phenocryst growth where with the mafic injection we have the enrichment rims growing around these as well. So with our mafic magma rejuvenation event which caused the eruption Noting that this is also the magma that brought in the olivine pyroxene, uh, olivine xenocrysts, we then get these crystals erupting at the surface where we see them in the volcanic material. Um, for Ohakuni, this is extremely similar, with the main difference being the interpretation that this magma is injecting into a deeper mush system. This mush system then also has olivine phenocrysts which grow within the primitive basalt and then eject into the silica system, more silica rich system, where we have these pyroxene reaction rims growing. We may also have further growth of this pyroxene where we get olivine uh, glomerocrysts with a olivine, no, pyroxene glomerocrysts with an olivine core. We may also just have pyroxene growth as phenocrysts or pyroxene growth as normal glomerocrysts. All of these pyroxenes are complexly zoned as an indication of the multiple rejuvenation events. 
once we have our magma rejuvenation event that caused the eruption, these crystals are then seen to erupt at the surface and are uh, in our magma to, uh, volcanic rocks. So in summary, we may have the same magmatic source where we have, um, where the main, uh, we may have a similar magmatic source with the main differences in volcanic material seen at the surface being a result of the different mush complex systems, where one, Ohakuni is deeper and Kukaneki is shallower. Um, in both of these eruptions, we identified that there is uh, mafic rejuvenation events which are causing the eruptions. Uh, my research is not completed yet, and I plan to continue my studies into next year, which will include further electron microprobe analyses. Um, I'll try and constrain the depths of these different mush systems. I will also look at the timing relationship between the rejuvenation events and the eruption times. And that's all I can remember. Thank you for <laughs> listening to my <laughs>